Okay, this is sort of video two in a little bit of a series where I'm showing you how to use GeoGebra to graph a surface using um, spherical coordinates. So I'm at GeoGebra.org. I'm going to click on 3D graphing to get an entirely new page. Um, you can see up here, if you watched the previous video, this is where I did all the work for the sphere. So I had two sliders set up so that I could change some angles around. Uh, it won't let me grab it. So I could change angles around. Um, and get a better sense of what's going on. So you can try to look at like a quarter sphere or whatever. You can draw some really nice uh, graphics this way if you mess around with enough things. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna play around with a cone. So same basic idea. Um, I've gone through and I've done the work and I've worked out that the cone I wanna start with actually ends up with spherical coordinates just phi is equal to pi over four. So the angle between uh, the z-axis and uh, the edge of the cone is going to be pi over 4. You can go all the way around the z-axis like that. And then um, the radius or rho could be anything, and theta could be anything, or 0 to 2 pi. So let's, uh, let's get that going. So I'm going to start with surface. So my angle is pi over 4. Um, I'm going to do this in kind of an inefficient way. I'm going to, to uh, I want rho to be a parameter because it can be anything. And I want theta to be a parameter, and then phi is fixed at pi over 4. So x in spherical is rho, which I'm going to call r in this case, because I don't want to mess around with Greek letters, um, and r and rho should be interchangeable. Uh, they're not exactly, because r actually serves a different function most of the time, but not in this case. So r, um, there's going to be a cosine of t, and then a sine of phi, but phi is just pi over 4, so I'm going to type pi over 4. And you can see I haven't finished this yet, so it's warning me. It wants to create sliders, probably for r and t. I don't know. I'm just going to hit comma because I'm going to enter the y-coordinate. So the y-coordinate is rho, which I'm using r for, sine of t, and then sine of phi, which I'm using pi over 4. Okay, make sure you're outside of this sign. Comma, we got to tell it what to do with z. So z is rho, which is r in our case, and then cosine of phi, and phi for us is pi over 4. So now what I need to do is I need to tell it my parameters. So I have two parameters going on here. I have r and I have t. So I'm going to start with r. So I'll say r goes from, let's just say 0 to, uh, zero to 5, I guess. And then t is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. And you can see it kind of fills it in. When it's 2, it's just graphing this weird thing over here. Um, it's, it's got a 2 radian, uh, 2 radian, what would you call this, arc, I guess? So that's 2 radians when you look down on it. Um, so I'm going to go back and change this to 2 pi so that I can see the whole thing. 2 pi. And press enter, and there you go. All right, so this is our cone, and that's pretty good. Um, but if you remember... Uh, we're only seeing kind of half of this because there should kind of be another cone down here. There's a lot of options for what you can do for this. So uh, one option, I'm going to click here on these dots and I'm just going to pick duplicate. And what I want to do is I don't want the exact same cone. So the angle formed here is pi over 4 between the z-axis and the xy plane basically um, is pi over 4. Uh, nope the z-axis and uh, the edge of the cone is pi over 4. So you arc out like this from here down is pi over 4. So what I could do is make that angle 3 pi over 4. So I need to make sure that I'm at the very beginning. It's kind of annoying to edit these things. So 3. This immediately, if you're familiar with GeoDroid, you should have some better ideas of what we could be doing here. Um, 3. And there you go. It instantly pops down there. And now... I have both parts of the cone, but I also have two equations, and that's kind of annoying. Um, so what else could I do? Well, let me hide this, or actually, I'm going to delete that. Let me delete that. Click there. Uh, I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to think about it. So I made rho, or r in our case, go from 0 to 5, so it stops at 0. But if you think about how polar coordinates worked, which you're probably a little more familiar with, um, you could have uh, theta be pi over 6 and r be 5, meaning face pi over 6 and walk forward pi over whatever I said, 5, I think. 
Um, so face pi over 6, walk out 5. Or you could face uh, what's directly opposed to pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 and go negative 5 and you'll end up in the same place. What if you had faced pi over 6 and had uh, r be negative 5? You would have walked backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to change this from 0 to 5 to negative 5 to 5. Press enter. And you can see now I'm actually getting both sides. And that's really good, because that's basically what I wanted. Um, so play around with that for sure to see if you definitely understand. The whole idea with using GeoGebra for these things is that you get to play around with it and you get to learn what's actually happening. Um, so there's a couple things I like to do. If there are any parameters anywhere, I like to turn them into sliders. So I'm going to make a slider for R1 and just say create slider. I'm going to actually let it go from negative 5 to 5. I'm going to go up here and edit my equation and have r go from negative r1 to r1 and press enter. I don't know what happened there. Um, oh, okay, I do know what happened there. r1 was set at one, so it got really small. Um, so now I can move this and my cone will get bigger and smaller. It looks like when, oh, when we go negative, there's an issue because I went from negative r1 to r1 so let's just change this so that that doesn't happen. I'm going to have it go from 0 to 5. Okay, so surface command doesn't know what to do when the minimum is bigger than the maximum, and nor should it, because that doesn't really make any sense. So we can do this, and that's pretty good. Um, what else can we do? I guess it's, it's really superficial, but uh, you can also change the colors of these. You go into settings, and then click on color. There's a couple things you can change. So we can change the color. Maybe uh, maybe find this more appealing. You can change uh, the opacity, which is uh, how how opaque it is. I mean, if you put it at zero, you get this nice wireframe looking thing, which is kind of cool. Um, if you make it a hundred, it's it's really filled in. And also, it's never the right color because you're selecting it. So when you click out of here, it'll change it to the correct color. Um, also, style you can change the lines. You can hide the lines if you make the line thickness zero; they just go away but I really like those, so I'm gonna leave them. Um, and then I'm gonna get out of here. So just wanted to make sure you knew you could do that. So we have this. Okay, so what else was I gonna do? Okay, I did R, I'm gonna do uh, theta, which we're calling T. So I'm gonna go T1, create a slider. Uh, I want my slider to go from zero to, I ideally wanna go zero to two pi, but if you remember, it kinda has that issue with rounding. So instead of um, two pi, I'm gonna go 6.29 and I'm gonna choose to make the step size 0.01 and press enter. Right now that slider's not doing anything, but if I go here and change this to T1, now I can see some really weird stuff. Um, and so you wanna play around with this for sure. And you can see how the cone is kind of being traced. You can actually see the line that's rotating around the Z axis to create our cone, which is interesting. Um, and in pre-calc, maybe in my math analysis class, we play around with that a little bit. Um, and it's kind of fun to see it actually happen. So we have that. And then there's one other thing I want to mess around with, because why not, right? Um, and that's actually, I'm going to mess around. I'm just going to create a, uh, a slider called V. And I'm going to let that go from, so that could be anything between, let's say, 0 and pi over 2. 0 and pi over 2, yeah, that'll work. And then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to edit this so that all of these angles, instead of being pi over 4, are actually just, so this is actually kind of a bad idea, because I'm never going to be able to get exactly pi over 4 out of this thing but it's a more fun idea, so I'm gonna do it anyway. And the idea is to try to learn as much as you can by messing around with these things, so why not? Uh, v, and I'm gonna press enter. I think it's gonna work, I think I changed them all. Okay, so now I've changed it. And I can vary up the angle that it's forming, so you can see the angle, it's always the angle of the z-axis, so the angle is tending towards zero, and when it gets to zero, everything just disappears because we're basically on the axis. We actually are the z-axis at that point. And then you can increase it. As you get toward pi over two, it really flattens out. So still a cone. 
um, really flattens out, but it, it definitely looks like our cone tends toward a plane. As we, are we experiencing, let me change my step size here. I'm gonna make this 1.58, I guess, but that's gonna go a little past. Um, and then 0 0.01, press enter, let's see. Tending toward a plane. There you go, pretty much a plane at that point at exactly pi over two. All right, um, I'm gonna wrap up this video here. That's a lot of ways that we can play around with a cone. I think you learn a ton by doing this. Um, really encourage you to uh, open your own web browser, go to geogebra.org, open a 3D graphing page, and uh, play around, because it's definitely worth it. You learn tons of stuff. All right, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.